so this is going to be your last major exam of this year, and as I promised, all you're going to have to do is to embed or list the embedded items for your easy free 100. Essentially next year, this is what your exams are going to look like on pencil and paper. No more of this canvas business. And I'm going to highlight uh, some of the things that you're going to see because rather early in Latin 2, you're going to have a legitimate exam like this. Section number one is going to be vocabulary. Now when you look at the vocabulary, obviously you see here, the first number is the uh, chapter, the second number is the line number. And you just got to know what the words mean. You will have to know what the words mean. Not, oh, it's okay, I'll just look at it in the book and get the answers. There's no more of that. You will have to know what the words mean. The day of reckoning is coming. And so, for example, you need to know that Adificium is building, or that Fortasse is perhaps, or that Frustra means in vain. And if you don't, you're going to crash and burn. Learn your vocabulary, learn it legitimately. So your first word that is going to be embedded is actually number 28, Iubere. I-U-B-E-R-E. -E. Spell it correctly, I'm not pointing at it, so you will not obviously get away with just looking for what I point at. Now, in the second section, you'll have an exam that will be like this, in which you have to choose the correct form of the adjective to modify the noun that is bolded. And so what you'll have to do is you'll have to identify the case, the number, and the gender, and then find the one that matches up with it. So, let's go ahead and go through it. Number one, it says, the slaves were driving the wagon with great skill. Plaustrum is accusative, direct object, singular, and it is neuter. Now, the neuter is the one that's going to give you the most trouble. Because most people would circle incorrectly grawim and grawium. Both of those are wrong. That is accusative singular, but it ain't the neuter form. And that one is genitive plural. And so in that way, remember here is your chart that you see that here, oh, there it is, nope, there we are, that you have the I stems, grawis, grawis, and grawe. So if we're looking for accusative singular neuter, grawe is the answer that we are indeed looking for. And so, going back to it, here it's going to be then grawe as the correct answer that goes there. Number two, the senators, no, they aren't doing anything because princeps is nominative. So the emperor welcomes the senators in the city. Senators is accusative, direct object, plural, masculine. And so you have to choose the correct form of accusative, plural, masculine, which you know then is bonos because that's accusative, plural, and masculine. Number three, the puellae are the ones who are doing the standing. So the girls watching the sky. This is a participle. One of the first things in Latin, too, that we are going to emphasize and talk about are our participles. We've only barely touched on them this year because of obviously all the time that has been lost. But they are a particular kind of girls, a spectantes girls. Uh, participles in one word are adjectives. Watching the sky. The girls were standing in the road. So they are the watching the sky girls. So we need accusative or not accusative. Nominative, plural, feminine. And so therefore, your answer is immobilize. Because that is nominative, a's, plural, and of course, feminine as well. It's either masculine or feminine. Number four. It's the same sentence almost, except here, Prinkipim, a clear accusative singular direct object. The senators were greeting the emperor in the city. And so I'm looking for accusative, singular, and masculine. Not accusative, not accusative, not accusative. There it is, magnum, as your correct answer there. So, the voices were hearing. No voices don't hear, so that tells me that is accusative. The Cornelii, the many people named Cornelius are doing the hearing. So the Cornelians were hearing, heard, the voices of people. That's a genitive plural in the in, in the motel. Nominative, plural, masculine. I'm looking for nominative, plural, masculine. That is an answer. That is an answer. Either one of those would be counted correct, as obviously that is nominative, plural. Your second word that is necessary for you to put in is uh, that word that you see there, number five, hominum. Your second word is hominum, H-O-M-I-N-U-M. -M. That's your second word for this major exam. Again, I'm not going to point at it. I'm going to make you obviously watch and listen closely. All right, so here, the second section, it's exactly the same as the first, but you have the same sentence written five times, 
in which then you've got to choose a form of magnus, aum, a first and second glinted adjective, to modify the underlying bolded word, and a form of fortis, fortis, forte. Now, remember that here are all 30 forms, and the reason why that they're all 30 forms is because that appears six times. All three genders, dative plural, all three genders, ablative plural. And so that is six words. That is five words. That is six words. That is two words. That is four words. That is three words. That is six words. That is two words. And that is two words. And so remember that there are 30 forms here and that there are 30 forms here. It just happens to be that very often they are going to be the same form for multitudes. Like, for example, I'm pointing at three words. Genitive singular, dative singular, nominative plural. So, Let's read the sentence, which I only need to translate one time. While the horses of the courier were pulling the sports car, the light two-wheeled carriage, through the roads quickly with skill, oxen were dragging carts, plural, of the motelier, of the innkeeper. They were dragging him with labor to the buildings neutral or accusative of the motel. And so, again, while the horses of the courier were quickly dragging the sports car through the roads quickly with skill, oxen were dragging carts, neutral plural accusative, of the innkeepers with labor to the buildings, plural, of the motel. So, boes is the one that is nominative plural, and so if they are oxen, it would be, uh oh, there it is. If it were oxen, masculine, magni, but it could be feminine cows, magni. Either one, depending upon whether we're talking about feminine cows or obviously masculine. For third declension, masculine and feminine are identical. So fortes is what you have there. So I'm not going to translate the sentence again because it's the same exact sentence. Oh, there we are. Here it is. And here it's going to say, lavore. I tell you it's masculine because otherwise you wouldn't know. Third declension, lavore, ablative object of the preposition cum. So I need to find ablative singular masculine. Ablative singular masculine is that right there. And ablative singular masculine, all third declension adjectives are I stems. The most incorrect answer given on this section, somebody would circle forte, thinking that it modifies lavore. No chance. Forte is nominative neuter singular or accusative singular neuter. The next word, calphonum. That right there is a third declension genitive plural. They are the carts of the innkeepers. So genitive plural is what we're looking for. Magnorum and genitive plural fortium are the ones that modify calphonum. Remember the calpo, calponus is a third declension variant form. Moving right along, tabulari, the horses of the courier. So it's genitive singular, masculine. That is genitive singular masculine, and that is genitive singular masculine as well. Genitive singular and masculine. Hopefully you're watching this, trying to actually understand, instead of just listening for the words that are embedded. I wonder, your day of reckoning is coming in Latin too. It is coming. Okay, the next one, moving on. Mm -hmm. Try to understand, uh, try to get better. So while horses were dragging the light two-wheeled carriage, kizium, it, like before we had seen, is accusative, it is singular, it is neuter. It is that neuter part that throws people off. The easy one is magnum is neuter as well, but here, which one is accusative singular? Neuter, that's accusative singular, but that's masculine or feminine. The neuter form is forte. Remember, it is fortis, fortis, neuter, forte. And then it'd be that way in the accusative as well. Then finally, calponai, towards the building of the inn. Three things could it be, but here, because in this context, it is genitive singular, thus it is calponai, genitive singular feminine. Genitive singular feminine, magnai. And what would it be for fortis, fortis, forte? Fortis. That is the one that it is. And that's your third word. Your third word is fortis. F-O-R-T-I-S. We move on to the next section. 
So you will be required to give all the forms and the person and number and these tenses. But now at this point, we have learned all six tenses. And so the exam that you're first going to be taking next year will expand this. Now please note that of the six verbs that you have here, three of them are irregular. And remember, for irregular verbs over here, for the green tenses, you just got to memorize those forms. You just got to know them. And if you don't, you are doomed. Now, for the perfect, blue perfect, future perfect, that's easy. You can just follow the rules. So, we'll do one of the regular verbs and all three of the irregular verbs. Parwa, our esteemed valedictorian of the class of 2021, will choose the non irregular. Oh, you want to come up here? Say hello. Parwa, this is our valedictorian. Aren't we so proud of her? I know that I am. So, of the non irregular, so regulars are numbers three, four, and six. Which one of these shall I do? No, 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 we're going to do all three of oh, the irregulars. Okay. Which regular verb? Oh, which re Oh, okay. Copio. Copio, yes, third I.O. Oh, look, 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 look. And it just happens to be that that's one of the ones that this week that we are working on every single day. So that should be a cakewalk, shouldn't it? So, here we are. With the present, imperfect, and perfect. You take the present stem. Cop. Cop. Then you have the junk in the middle that you need to know. The junk in the middle here for the third plural is going to be with NT. The junk in the middle is, of course, IU. IO here, IU there. This junk in the middle is IEBA. And then NT. If we were to do the future just for funs and giggles, it would be COP. And your junk in the middle for a third IO is IE. NT. For the perfect, you take the perfect stem, K, and then E, ISTI, IT, TIMIS, ISTIS, ERUN. That's as simple as that. And then for the plural perfect, era. And for the future perfect, era. But oh well, that's neither here nor there. So, moving on, let's go back and do the irregular ones just for funs and giggles, and I'll be able to obviously write them down quickly. As soon as S, soon as S is sung. Aramaras, Aram, Aramas, 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 And foo, E is the it, M is. Is this uh, Just for funds in English, if it were future. Uh oh, didn't want to do that. Yikes. Eretis. For AO ERE, again, it's right over there. It's been up there the whole time. Third singular. It, imperfect. E bot, I just had to memorize those futures. E bit, I just had to memorize it, but now we can obviously follow the rules. Perfect stem from the third principal part. E is the it. Look at the difference between the perfect and the present. And I'll skip NOLO just because mm, we'll be able to get to that one later. Your fourth item that is embedded for you, one, two, three, four, four, is the perfect of eo ere, it, it, I, I, T. Make sure you get all three letters. So your fourth item, I, I, T, that was just up there a second ago. Now, ah, you're going to have to translate the following verb forms. And in translating these following verb forms, it's just that you have to be able to identify not only what it means, but more importantly, you have to identify what tense it is and then be able to translate it. So, errant is from sumese. They were. Wait it. Why did I say that? Because that is a perfect stem and a perfect ending. The present would look just like it, except for it would have a present stem, present vowel, present ending, instead of a perfect stem with perfect ending. Just happens to be the perfect ending. IT would be the same letter combinations as the present vowel and the present ending. So, he came, he comes. They were running. We sent, did send, I was leaving, y'all prepare, he has, that has an E in it. And since it has an E in it, you have to ask the question, is it second or is it third? It's second, habeo habere. He has, he is having, he does have. Yeki, I threw, I did throw, I have thrown, perfect tense. E und, they go, it is the present of the verb, e o ire. Audi weyerund is, they heard, they did hear, they have heard. Your fifth item, habet, H-A-B-E-T. Habet, your fifth item, H-A-B-E-T. Now we move on to the most important of all of the sections. Every single major exam that you'll ever take in Latin 2 and Latin 1 is the translation. Why do we learn those noun forms that we worked on subject, or I should say noun adjective agreement? We learn them because of the ability to be able to read Latin. Why do we learn our verb forms to be able to read Latin? So let's go through these sentences and figure out uh, what each of these say. While the innkeeper, that is nominative, it's a variant form. The genitive is calponis, but it is not with an ending. That just happens to be the letter O. While the innkeeper 
was leading the Cornelians in plus accusative into the motel, a sports car, which is nominative, U-M. You see how? You see? Neuter. The neuter sports car was going priter past. The sports car in the nominative with the U-M almost did hit, almost was hitting them. All, however, were, and all the people, we're substantizing them these, were unhurt because the man was driving the sports car ablative with great skill. Moving on to the next one. Easiest exam grade of 100 you'll ever make. <laughs> Moving on, it says, the slaves of the genitive singular innkeeper tried to drag out the minivan out of the ditch, ablative, with the help of genitive plural other horses, but in vain. Therefore, the Cornelians, now look, that looks like an infinitive. How do I know it's not? The perfect stem. That V sucks tells me it's a perfect stem, so therefore it is really the equivalency of Aarunt. Therefore, the Cornelians, they spent the night, did spend the night, have spent the night in the motel while the coachman did remain maneo maneare with the minivan. And let me point out too, you don't know vocabulary. Translation is impossible. You've got to know what words mean. These days of canvas, being able to easily cheat are over. And aren't I so glad that they're coming to an end? The oxen were dragging many carts, neuter, plural accusative, don't you see? Plaustrum, there it is, plaustra, towards the buildings, artificia, of the motel for the innkeeper was having in mind, this is an idiom, idiomatically we'd say intended to move all heavy, neuter, plural, substantized things in those wagons. Ilis means those. You've got to know vocab, you've got to know the forms. You don't know vocab and the forms, you are not going to do well. Don't get into Latin too and fail Latin too, having passed Latin one simply because you jumped through hoops. That would be the worst. Don't do that. All right, the next one, number four. It says, as, because that's what it means, they enter into the motel, the Cornelians hear in the present tense the voices of men. Then they catch sight of a fat innkeeper, stunt him in present active participle. It tells us what kind of innkeeper. A standing at the door of the motel innkeeper is the one that they spot. You can recognize it because it has NT plus a third declension ending from a verb. A participle is a verbal adjective. And finally, the last one. See if we cannot finish up this section of the exam. Because there are going to be two. There's another one to follow this one. It's an exam after all. You're going to have to earn the points. Oh, no, worry about all that. Oh, yikes. There it is. All work, are working, do work. Present stem, present vowel, present ending. While the oxen were dragging slowly the loads towards the building with great labor, and the oxen of the genitive singular innkeeper, the slaves of Cornelius, not of the Cornelians, of the Cornelians would be Corneliorum, plural, this is Cornelii of Cornelius, were driving the minivan with skill through the roads. However, Sextus was climbing in plus accusative into the branches Mr. Adams, of the trees. Yes? Are you expecting a student named Angel? Sure, yes. Okay, I just wanted to be sure before I sent her down. That's fine, thank you. Because he was a reckless boy. Your sixth item in this first half of the major exam is the first word of the previous sentence. Ut, U-T. That's your sixth item. It should be easy to go ahead and put it in. So, that's the first half. Be ready for the second half in just a moment. All right, welcome to part two of your major exam in which you are inputting embedded items. 
we're going to go over another exam, this one covering chapters 1 through 22. And you're going to see from this exam, compared to the last one, the setup is exactly the same. And again, next year, no more exams on Canvas. They are going to be in paper, requiring you to actually know the material. As always, the first section of the exam is going to be vocabulary. Here I did not yet have put the chapter and line number, but I provide for you a copy of paper of all of the chapters so that you can put it into context, so that you can see Agnoscare in the context of its chapter 17 to recognize, or Luque in the context of its chapter by the because of from in on that light and so forth and so on. Your seventh item, and there's going to be a grand total of 11, so the first one of the second half, but seventh overall that you need to input, is number 10, Reliqui. You see it right there, R-E-L-I-Q-U-I. R-E-L-I-Q-U-I is what you need to put in for your seventh item. We move on to the second part. Now that's the agreement. Again, it's the exact same as what we saw last time. In that, obviously, you are choosing the correct form of the adjective to modify the noun that is in bold. The soldier told, did tell, another story to Cornelius. And here we have a participle. Again, when you see NT as the last letters of the stem, plus a third declension ending on a form of a word that is clearly from a verb, the verb pernocta pernoctare, it is a participle and translates as verbing. So which Cornelius? the one spending the night in the motel. Miles is nominative singular, and so bonus is going to be modifying miles. The slaves, tired by with because of from the journey, because of the journey, did depart, did leave with joy, and they did depart the fields. Labore is ablative, singular, masculine, and so we need to choose the ablative singular masculine, and that ablative singular masculine is going to be Mongo, that would be modifying laborre. Number three, the horses of Cornelius. Singular, if it were plural, it would be Corneliorum. The horses of Cornelius are able to drag the minivan out of the ditch with the help of the oxen. Third declension, so um is genitive plural. Genitive plural. And so we need to find the genitive plural here, and there it is, only um. Number four is the same sentence as number one, but here we have unlined Cornelio, who is your dative indirect object, because it is the one receiving the story. And of course we have the ditransitive verb, give, show, speak, or tell, gotta ring that dative bell. So dative singular. And so variant I-S, I is the dative singular, Modifying Cornelia. Number five. It says, the slaves, it's the same sentence, departed the fields, tired from the labor with joy. Ablative, singular, feminine. All third declension adjectives are I stem. So that's your ablative singular, not omne. That is from omnis, omnis, omne in the nominative, telling you that's nominative singular neuter or accusative singular neuter. And then finally, the last one, the horses of Cornelius, same sentence, are able to drag the Rennie van out of the ditch with the help of the oxen of the motelier, of the innkeeper. Short as, genitive singular, genitive singular, bony that you see there. Your eighth item that you need to put in is the word circled for number five, omni, O-M-N-I. That is your eighth item. So now you have only left nine, ten, and eleven. In this exam, here, what you have to now do is to translate the verb forms. Don't worry about giving the tense, because your translation will tell me if you know the tense or not. So let's go through it really quickly. I see the virus. First thing I notice is B-A. Second thing is ris. You were given. You were being given. We didn't tour. I see the E. Ask the question. Is this second or third? Video. We there. Second conjugation verb with an E is present. They are seen, they are being seen, but remember it can also mean in the passive to seem. They seem. Legatus, again we have an E, I have to ask the question. Lego. Legre. And on a quiz like this, on an exam like this, I probably will give you the principal parts that you'll be able to go find out. So you won't have to have memorized it, but eventually you do have to memorize it. And so, 
Seeing as it's third, an E from a third means it's future. Y'all will read. Number four, that is a passive, so not I prepare, but I am prepared. I the turkey, not I the grandma on Thanksgiving. Deek seven from Deco Deacon A Deeksy Dictus, a future perfect with a future perfect in the a row, a res a rent, a rem is a rent is a rent. From the verb to speak, and so they will have spoken. If I see Alongi, future it'll be. They will throw. Now when I look at number seven, number seven could possibly be an infinitive, but it is not. And the reason why I know that it is not is because I see the U of the perfect stem. So it is the alternate ending of erunt. E is the it, imis is this erunt. They placed. They did place. They have placed. Number eight. First and foremost, I see a bi. There it is. Looks like a bu, but it's bi because the intor turned that i into a u. And then intor. So they passively will be ordered in the future. Fu eras. Perfect stem fu. Pluperfect ending, eras, eram, eras, eras, so you had been. Weiss is your irregular verb. When it comes to irregular verbs, and you see them over here, weiss, there it is, the present of the verb, wolo, wele, up here. I'm off the screen, but you ah, can yes. be able to see it at the moment. There it is. So, present, I want, you want, he wants, so weiss is you want, you are wanting, you do want. Have a bomb, I said the B-A, I said the mini. So, y'all were... Held. Y'all were being held. Miserimus. Perfect stem. Meno, metere, misi. Erinus is a future perfect ending. We will have sent. Corin. I gotta ask the question because I see the longing. NT ate the Macron. Cura. Cura. Ran. And so they will. When there is an E in a third conjugation, it is a future. They will run. Credidisti. Perfect stem. Perfect ending. E is the it. You believed. You did believe. You have believed. And again, on the exam, I will give you the principal parts and the definitions because this is not a vocab quiz or a vocab section. Two letters. You had. Da -da 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 -da, pluperfect. Carried. Cape editus. Perfect stem. Future perfect ending. Y'all will have captured. Perfect stem, I can tell because of the long O. Moe, oh, moe, moe, with a perfect ending. He moved, he did move, he has moved, and when uh, he had, da, 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 with a perfect ending, come. Your ninth word is number seven. You see it right there, posuere, P-O-S-U-E-R-E, posuere. Let's look at the sentences. And where we will then get the 10th and 11th embedded items. So there are five sentences. On an exam like this, you will have the sentences as by far the most valued section of the exam. It will be worth probably as much as all the rest of the exam combined. After the innkeeper, and here are these sentences that we're learning right at the beginning of Latin 2 are participles. Present active participle. And the nominative, simulon, simulon, simulons, and then all of the other would be... Simulant, within third intention ending. Simulantis, simulanti, simulantim, and so forth and so on. We call this a present active participle. It translates as verbing, and it tells us what kind of an innkeeper. The one pretending innocence, after that innkeeper had d -d 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 killed his guest, he placed, did place, has placed the body of the dead Alice. Lots of people want to say dead body, but Mortui does not modify corpus. Mortui modifies Alice. You've got to have the same case number gender. Pay attention to these details uh, under the manure. He placed the body of dead Alice under the manure. When the boys did hear, have heard this part of the story of the soldier, genitive, genitive, they feared very much or greatly. Number two, the boys. So, now, the fourth principal part of a verb, you be, you be, a, you see, you see, this is a different kind of participle. The fourth principal part is what we call the perfect passive participle. So here, we know what kind of boys, the having been verbed. Fourth principal part, perfect passive participle. The ones having been ordered to go to bed. So when we look over here to the right-hand side, do you see captus, I own 30 forms of it, having been captured. Depending upon what it's modifying, you change the forms. Captus, I own, having been bought. 
Datu sum having been given, but it changes in its form. Since, of course, pueri is nominative plural, we may you see nominative plural. The ones having been ordered to go to bed, they wanted. That is an alternate ending. I tell because it is on the end of a perfect stem, the V sucks, and so it's not an infinitive to remain with Cornelius. For they did have, do you see the alternate ending? In mind to hear all neuter, plural, accusative, substantized things, and to hear. The que means and, as we know. That que, when it is on a word, it means and, and it is as though the and is on the word before it. Because Cornelius, ah, ask the question, meta, metere, it's third conjugation. Long e in a third conjugation, future. Will not send the boys to their bedrooms. They will be. That is the future. Look at Erun over here to the right. Ero, eris, erit, erimis, eritis, erunt. I will be, you will be, he will be, we will be, all be, they, the boys, will be happy. Number three. Coom. When you see the word coom, and it is not hanging around an ablative, it is going to mean when. So when the Cornelians will have departed from the country house and will have approached the city in the dative case. Cornelius, trotto. Got to ask the question. Trotto, trottere. That is an E in a third conjugation verb, and so therefore, future Cornelius will hand over the stick to the dative of Dawes. That is a ditransitive verb with a direct object and an indirect object. If geta, if I see I long E, future B, will not serve Dawes, Dawus will harm geta with a stick. We're going to learn in Latin 2 that there are certain verbs that will require, instead of an accusative object, these verbs are special verbs that require a dative object. Parket meaning to spare, also does that. Dawus will not spare because it's parco. Parkere, that E of a third conjugation verb, the slaves who will not obey another verb that requires a dative object, the dative mandates of Cornelius. So be on the listen out for the fact that we're going to learn at the beginning of Latin to special verbs that require dative objects. Most verbs have accusative objects, uh, direct objects particularly, but some verbs require a dative object. Soon it will be a row of resurrect necessary for the father of Marcus. Look at this. Both patri and marquis have long eyes. But patri is dated because pater, patris, patri, for the father, marcus, marquis of Marcus. Soon it will be necessary for the father of Marcus to go back home. But first the emperor will give orders in the curia to the native senators who are receiving those direct object accusative orders, neuter plural, mandatu, mandati, mandato, mandata concerning the streets of the city. Titus, the uncle of Marcus, Patros, is an appositive to Titus, already had to perfectly heard the orders of the emperor. Therefore, he did not come, has not come, that long he tells me it's a perfect stem, to the curia. The curia, remember, is the senate house. The last sentence, after which I will give you the 10th and 11th final words. Or I might give you during, you don't know. Make sure you listen. In itinerary, on the journey, Sextus. Cornelii is not going to be my subject because I already have a subject here. Cornelii is going to be dative case. Because of its function, do I know that it's dative case of the three that could be. On the journey, Sextus will tell all accusative, neuter, plural things to the date of Cornelia, receiving the all things, the one sedenti. Remember, this is a present active participle. Has an nt in its stem from a verb with a third declension ending, date of modifying Cornelia. On the journey, he will tell all the things to Cornelia in the minivan. Which one? The Cornelia sitting in the minivan. And he will tell all things about the dead mouse the mouse in Wento. It is the perfect passive participle in Wento and Wento, the mouse having been found under the bed. So again, on the journey, Sextus 
will tell everything, all things about the dead mouse having been found under the bed to Cornelia, the one sitting in a minivan. Present active participle, perfect passive participle, which is the fourth principal part. After Sextus, no, no, Cornelia, not Sextus. Sextus didn't do it or anything. Afterwards, Cornelia does not believe. And this is one of those special verbs that takes a dative object. And so, does not believe it. Sextus. If I were to say, what is the only kind of mother that I can love, it is an accusative mother, because the word love is normal and would have an accusative object. But take the verb credo. It means to trust or believe. What's the only kind of mom I can trust or believe? It's a dative mom. And the reason why these verbs are like that is because what are you doing when you believe? You're giving belief to someone. You're giving trust to someone. And so therefore it takes a dative object, and that's why credit has as its object sexto. Your final two words are both in this sentence. Sedenti is your tenth word. It's a present active participle. S-E-D-E-N-T-I. Spell it correctly. And your eleventh and final word is the perfect passive participle in this sentence. In Wainto, you see it right there. Third word from the end of the first line. I-N-V-E-N-T-O. Those are your eleven items. Hopefully you actually watch this to try to learn. But nevertheless, eleven things to put in. Major exam grade 100. Next year in Latin 2, it gets real. Bye.